Hello again everyone, today we're coming back to your opening series, this time on the French Defense, the Burn Variation. Now straight up, this variation might be one of the simplest and also the kindest approach towards black in the French Defense Variation. And the reason towards this is that black, you know, you give black um, a bit of room to develop black squared bishop, with something like bishop to b7 and bishop to a6 after you place pawn to b6. Which would otherwise be a difficult task if you had played something like pawn to e5 and after that pawn to f4 to lock up the structure and lock up the bishop behind the pawn chain. Even if you play something like pawn to b6, bishop to b7, he will still be locked up in a pawn chain. So this would be good for white. And that's really the goal of playing against the French defense is to play against the light squared bishop and to keep it out of the game for as long as possible. Now this line of bishop to g5 and then pawn takes on e4, it is clear that we let black to develop a bit after, you know, let's say pawn to b6, we can play bishop to b7 for black and it'll be fine, um, black squared bishop actually for black to develop. The development will have been easy for black. But in any case, this is still an opening, this is still a line to play, people play it from time to time, although with a much less frequency than the one that we talk about with pawn to e5, but that will be for another video. And this line in French defense is usually for those who plays a little bit more conservatively and who wants an open board position and where pawns are not on the board anymore because after knight takes on e4 in this position and bishop to e7 there's really nothing that white could do besides exchanging off um, a couple of pieces on f6 as you can see the knight here is hanging on e4 so some someone has to do something and it's not bringing the knight back to c3 because white tried bringing it to e4 anyway if you try to, to bring it back to c3 so somebody has to exchange and it's going to be white um, there are a couple of options here as to how um, one actually exchanges this off. The first half is to exchange off everything on f6 and let black takes on f6 with his queen. And after knight to f3, it suffice to say that after move 9, black has equalized. There's nothing um, that white could have proved in this opening to actually gain an advantage. For example, black can already play pawn to c5. Very, very, very common move in French defense to break up the center of the board, take the pawn on d4. And let's say if you take the pawn on c5, queen takes b2, um, this wrecks the structure on the queen's side. So you could choose another option, something like bishop to b5, for example, um, to prolong the game. This comes in with check, but a simple bishop to d7 blocks up the check and black just castles very easily. And in the end, as you can see, even just get to the bishop on d7 very simply. And so this is really the opening that we want to avoid if we want to win. But for someone who really loves an open position and to avoid theory, this might be perfect because it's very, very flexible opening to play. Now for someone who has played this position for a long time, you might have noticed that black sometimes in this position plays castle on the king's side. However, in this position, we just play queen to d3 and after let's say pawn to c5 or whatnot, um, we can play, you know, just castle on the queen's side and plays our queen on e4 with the bishop on d3 the battery on h7. I believe you've seen this position a lot from Grandmaster's plays as well. But, you know, in this variation, castle on the king's side is usually more inferior than playing c5 at once. Um, it has been proven that after black castle on the king's side, usually black loses. No matter what Grandmaster's is playing behind black in this position, the result has been very, very bad. Um, with black castling first compared to when black plays pawn to c5 first. And so people from the past will have chosen something like castle on the king's side rather than playing something like pawn to c5 directly. But I suspect and expect that people from the modern chess will play something like pawn to c5 very quickly as soon as possible to break up the center of the board. However, again, it leads to the position where it's just a bit boring and it usually ends up in a draw. And so I believe I will have to talk a lot about this, but there are some instances where both sides are trying to play for win and trying to play for more rather than simple draw. And that is by playing bishop takes on f6 by white. In this position, there are a couple of options from black as well. That is by playing pawn takes on f6 and also bishop takes on f6. But now we're just going to look at what happens if black chooses to play pawn takes on f6 in this position. Now I hope that we can see that there's some imbalances in this position with double pawns. First of all, black's not trying to exchange off anything else and it's opened up the rook to attack on g-file, he still has a double bishop pair, what does not have the double bishop pair, and so the imbalance is perfect for both sides to strive for win. Now the key idea for one has been to play queen to d2, 
knight to c3, castle on the king side, and then pawn to d5 to strike on the center of the board to break up some of the pawn chain on the king side or on the center of the board. However, black usually has a good counter of it, and that's by playing pawn to b6 and bishop to b7. Again, this couple of moves really is annoying in this variation. Normally, you wouldn't have this kind of move and simple development for this bishop, but it is this variation anyway that we're talking about, and so here we go. So this is basically the best counter to stop d5 advance. And then after castle on the queen side to force open with d5, black usually plays pawn to c6. These pawn moves actually stop d5 from pushing. Also in the end of the day, gives queen to c7 option for black and castle on the queen side. As the king side is quite open um, to castle on, and black usually castle on the queen side and therefore puts the queen on c7 first. That's normally what happens. But in this position, it's not like black has gotten out of the theory zone and simply equalizes. White still has a lot of play here with something like pawn to f4. Pawn to f4 is with the idea is let's say black plays knight to b7, a nonchalant but logical move, then something like pawn to f5 will occur in the board where black doesn't really want to take on f5 because hello, triple pawns on the king side and also the open king on the center of the board. This would be an awkward situation for black to handle. Of course, if in this case, if black does nothing, then something like, um, let's say, plays queen c7, then something like pawn takes on e6. This stretch open the layer of defense that black has on the center of the board. Attacking e6 pawn at once, something like rook to e1, queen to e3, knight to f3, will be a fine development for white, and black will struggle to defend his pawn on e6. So that will be a no-no for black. So usually black in this position um, actually plays pawn to f5. Now this gives a room for the bishop to work on, also to stop the pawn from advancing to f5 and cause some trouble. Later on in the game, you can play rook to g8, targeting the g file, and we'll work on the opening from there. And uh, yeah, knight to f3 usually played by white. And after, let's say, knight to d7 and queen to c7, we usually play g3 and bishop to g2, just because we don't have a little scope on the center of the board with this kind of defense. And so usually we focus a bishop on the king's side, attacking towards the queen's side right here. Additionally, if you bring your bishop, let's say, to c4 in this variation, you might be hit by pawn to b5 after black castles on the queen side, or pawn to b5 immediately, that's also very possible. And so that's why in this position, majority of the player will play g3 and bishop to g2, to just leave the bishop have a pr prospect on the king side right here. The sample line in this position could be that black castle on the queen side, you know, bring the rook to screen the queen here on d2, the queen could have gone to, let's say, e3, to prepare something like knight jump to e5 and rook to e1. And let's say in this position, black plays pawn to h4 to break up the king side, it's pretty normal. And we can play knight to e5, that's been our goal as well, to bring the knight to the center of the board and to trade some pieces. Also additionally attacks the pawn on f7. Normally you also see black try to exchange that off. And in this position, to be honest, just pretty much equal for black. Black has placed nicely in this position and it'll be up to the players to come up with something creative in this position and in the middle game phase to, let's say, incur some blunder from your opponent. But as of the current moment, we can see that it's a solid position for black. It's really hard to break through. The other move that white definitely can play is to play queen to h6, and that is with the idea of taking a pawn h7 of the queen to g7. And so let's say after black develops something very simple, knight to d7, we can play something like queen to g7, attacking the rook. After rook to f8, we pick up the pawn h7. And so this is actually a fallible line to play as well. Um, the idea is, yes, we have brought up our major pieces multiple times just to take a pawn. But uh, then we have a h-pawn that we can push forward later in the game to create a pass pawn. So sample line again, this position will be something like queen to c7, getting ready to castle on the queen side. And then quite literally, we can prepare to bring our queen back and to push our pawn, something like queen to h3 will be fine in this position. But let's say after castle on the queen side, we can bring queen to e3, and voila, we can just push our pawns onto h4, h5, h6, and hopefully we can get a queen later on. And if it's not for the queen, this pawn will be serving as a good deflection um, to give up a pawn for a good development down the road later on. Another simple move that white can play is play queen to d3, queen to b1, and let's say pawn to h4 next, pawn to h5, h6, and just develop our pieces like this. Very simple in this position. Black will try to just castle on the king's side, bring the rook on h8, stop the pawn from promoting something along the line. Pawn to f5 as well as we talk about. 
And so that's pretty much the possible line if black plays pawn takes on f6 in this position. Um, in this position, black can also play bishop takes on f6. And as we've discussed earlier, knight can take on f6. But this results in a very drawish and dry position of the pawn to c5. And so for the white players who wants to keep some chances to win, they usually play knight to f3. Now this one defends the pawn on d4 as this being attacked right now. And for black, it's just the same old principle again. Bring the knight to d7 and play pawn to b6 in this position and bishop to b7 to bring the bishop out to develop this on the long diagonal. Easy development for black. Now as for the queen, it can go to d2, it can go to d3. If it goes to d3, there's a possible idea of bringing the knight to g5 and checkmating black if black ever castles on the king's side with pawn to h4, pawn to h5 later on. So for example, if black castles on the king's side, then already there might be ideas of let's say pawn to h4 in this position to attack on the king's side, knight to g5 next move with threat and checkmate. It's just that most of the time it's not easy. If let's say pawn to b6, knight to g5, black could have simply played pawn to g6 and that's that. However, then white can also just play pawn to h5 in this position and so that leaves a lot of options for black and white to go through. Mainly it's dangerous for black and very very playable for white because it's just going to castle on the queen's side and that's just going to be very easy safety for the white king. But I personally never believe in queen to d3 attack and so I usually recommend players to just play something like queen to d2 and this has been one of the most common line for white as well instead of queen to d3 where it's just trying to go for some cheeky checkmate. Um, in this position black can castle but after castle on the queen's side the usual plan comes again with b6 and bishop to b7 as we talk about. Um, this queen e3 move from white is just trying to defend the knight on e4 but that's normally the move that players play and the engine gave. I usually like to play queen to f4 just to confront the bishop a little bit. That is nicer in my opinion but again there are so many options and it's flexible that you can choose your own lines um, after a couple of moves in the opening. So again as I said queen to e3 and also queen to f4 is possible in this position just to protect this knight on e4 after the bishop comes to b7. Up here there's a couple of options for white as well. White could have gone for let's say knight to e5 or bishop to d3. Knight to e5 brings the knight to the center encouraging the exchange let's say. So black takes on e5. If the queen is open to rook that will be kaput for black. Black however can choose something like bishop to e7 just to get out of the confrontation on f6. Relieving some pressure. And in this position it's really difficult again to make progress because even let's say we have bishop to b5 then black plays knight to f6 which again counters attack on e4 we have to do something about the knight on e4 and so usually we play something like um, knight takes on f6 and after bishop takes on f6 we can play pawn h4 stop the bishop g5 pin that will be bad for us while at the same time trying to attack on the king's side again if bishop takes on b g2 then very quickly our rook g1 will prove to be very very good for us because let's say um, the rook is open, the queen is here ready to attack on the king's side, that would be very bad for black to defend and the blacks already cast on the king's side as well and so this would be kaput if black plays like this. Sample line again would be something like bishop to b6 where after let's say the exchange and queen to e8, very quickly queen takes on f6 is good for us and if queen to d7 also queen takes f6. If in this position rook to b8 is played, then bishop takes b7 and knight c6 is also the same result where after queen to d7, let's say queen takes f6 is um, a kaput line for black. So that will be pretty bad if it just takes on g2. However, as I said again, this position is rather equal if black plays carefully. Another option that black can play in this position is to play bishop to e7 directly after he plays knight to d7. That is with the idea of playing pawn to c5 next move. Pawn to c5 breaks up the center of the board and try to bring up more minor pieces to the center. So already we can play something like queen to f4 and so after pawn to c5 let's say we can directly take and if knight takes of course he loses the queen there's no no to that and if bishop takes on c5 then knight c5 that he can also take on c5 because the queen just hangs on d8. And so usually in this position as well if black plays pawn to c5 and we take Black usually responds with something like queen to a5, attacking the pawn on c5 this way, so the knight now can attack on c5 without being pinned by the rook. Again, it's attacking a2 as well, so we're probably very forced to play king to b1 and also a3 to stop the a pawn from being lost. In this position, there's some um, freedom to what black can do, knight to c5 can happen, bishop c5 can happen, 
um, but usually in this position we can probably claim that the position is better for us because easy development easy attack easy plan we can just push everything on the king side and yeah trying to checkmate black in this position well white is focusing all the pieces on the queen side but slightly better if you can defend um again it's just pretty much equal for for black the sample line is something like queen to b4 again if black plays something like pawn to h6 then it's simply queen to e4 with a checkmate idea on h7 f5 can block it but then simply queen to e2 we still maintain the pressure on e6 and the c6 pawn is weak anyway and so it's not anything good this would be a pretty bad position for black to go to now the last idea that we want to go through before we wrap up is the fact that if black plays bishop to b7 and in this position we can play bishop to c4 to play pawn to d5 next move this is again the idea that we talk about again and again this is not change just because black plays bishop to f6 in this position and so the idea is still the same we want to break up the center of the board and open up our rook against the queen here and that open e file and d file will prove something um, to be advantageous for us but sadly in this position black also has a counter in this position black plays bishop to d5 and that's the end of our fun um, we can play bishop to b3 but we're never going to open d file bishop takes on b3 pawn takes b3 possible i don't like this position though so usually i recommend you guys to just take on d5 and let's say take on f6 in this position knight to e5 and again just you know it depends on the creativity and the blunder of your opponent to basically let you win the game but if essentially if black plays nicely then it will be a draw anyway and so yeah that's basically all of the opening lines that i want to talk to you today regarding the burn variation of taking on e4 and knight takes on e4 and uh, yeah, it's a very dry opening. I don't really recommend um, playing bishop to g5 anyway. But for you guys who wants to play an open position, a very simple position just to play chess in general, I recommend it. But not for someone who wants to win. Um, for someone who wants to win badly, I recommend pawn to e5 and pawn to f4. But that will be coming in the next um, few videos. And so that's that. If you learn anything new, if you learn something new, if you have fun, please consider slamming the like button. It'll help me. A lot. I'll appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.